Chris, I'd love to get your impression uh, on the potential shutdown of the government. He said that he was willing to do that in order to get funding for the wall, but said that he was willing to negotiate. Do you think that this is an increasing risk heading into the end of the year? Or do you think that uh, that Republicans will do everything they can to avoid a shutdown ahead of the midterm elections? I mean, I think heading into the end of the year, yes. Heading, heading into the midterms, not as much. Uh, Trump sort of, you know, tried to, to do a little jujitsu there on exactly when the shutdown would be. Keep in mind, we've already had two shutdowns uh, under President Trump. So I, I do think, you you know, the, the other thing that wasn't mentioned in the press conference really, though, is that you, you've sort of had this honeymoon between President Trump and another newly elected leader that's uh, the president in Mexico, AMLO, who is sworn in on December 1. You've got sort of this sort of pop on the NAFTA negotiations, I suspect, you know, as Trump ratchets up rhetoric on the border wall, which is unbelievably unpopular uh, in Mexico, that those NAFTA talks will probably head south uh, again. Yeah, that's a really good point. And of course, the president also made clear that when he talked about border security uh, with respect to the shutdown, it could include the wall, but that would just be one part of it. Chris, I want to get your take here on the president's remarks regarding Italy's trade surplus with the U.S. If you look at ECTR Go on the Bloomberg, which tracks the trade flows between different countries, you can see that Italy currently has a $33 billion trade surplus with the United States. And this is something the president brought up time and again throughout the news conference, saying that they're working very hard to to change that. How much room does Giuseppe Conte have to change it? Well, he kind of switched back and forth as well between surplus and deficit, but whatever. Um, I don't, my, my belief is, I don't think he has much at all. I mean, remember that, I mean, Brussels is the primary negotiator on these issues and it has to be unanimous. Uh, I mean, the other big surprise, I think, in this press conference wasn't, you know, what was said, but what wasn't said. Uh, mm-hmm. Autos were not mentioned in either, in either opening remark and only sort of referenced at the end in sort of a throwaway question. And that remains kind of the, the central, you know, component of this along with, Uh, already sort of the fraying uh, notion that agriculture is somehow involved in this truce of the trade war escalation when in reality it's only a a small purchase of soybeans and that's that's the extent of it. Chris, I'd love to get your take on President Trump's comments saying that he was willing to meet with Iranian leader Hassan Rouhani without any preconditions. Do you view this as a really significant move toward coming up with a more uh, perhaps friendly agreement with Iran? No. I mean, this is Trump <laughs> right at a, you know, doing an improvisation. I mean, it's an improvisational riff, right? Like after that, he says, I'll, I'll meet with anybody. I mean, you know, the, the Iran deal has been scrapped. November 4th is when the, uh, the, uh, basically the, the sanctions snap back on. Um, I mean, maybe they'll have a meeting, um, but, uh, you know, keep in mind, you now have John Bolton as national security advisor, Mike Pompeo as, as secretary of state, two of the, the bigger, you know, Iran hawks. Uh, so, um, I mean, maybe, right, there's like a 20 percent chance of anything with Trump. But no, I mean, I, I wouldn't, you know, r- go down the rabbit hole too much on this. I think it was an improvisational riff, which is you know, par for the course. Mm, so an impulsive answer, perhaps, to a question there. Chris, uh, throughout the Q&A session of this news conference, the president at various times complained about how the U.S. was treated unfairly, we were taken advantage of, whether it was NATO uh, spending, whether it was on trade, whether it was uh, immigration. You've written that no one plays grievance politics better than President Trump. How does he do that effectively, though, while taking victory laps on the stronger economy? Just last week, he talked about how the economy is growing at 4% or are those comments directed at different audiences because it seems hard to reconcile. Right and then also you know did a did a riff on subsidies when last week unveiled a 12 billion dollar subsidy for for US farmers. So no I mean you know he's he he knows his audience he plays to his audience. Um, but, w- you know, when he was discussing the, the surplus slash deficit, you know, vice versa, he didn't mention autos, which, again, I, just coming back to this, I mean, for, for a, that, that was a key part of the trade narrative ex-China for the, la- for the last couple months. The fact that Trump didn't mention that, um, I think, is important, although, you know, he was with, you know, his new best friend on the continent, Conti, probably now replacing Macron as, you know, tr- as the, the Trump whisperer of Europe. 